This is video two of section three, where we will be talking about using plain language and document automation. So what is plain language? Plain language is clear, straightforward expression using only as many words as are necessary. But why do we need to use plain language for self-represented litigant facing tools? Over 20 years ago, the National Center for Education Statistics did a five-year, $14 million study on adult literacy with over 90,000 Americans. It was the most comprehensive study of literacy ever commissioned by the US government, and it found the statistics that you're seeing here. A smaller follow-up study in 2006 showed no statistically significant improvement. 50% of adults are considered functionally illiterate, with 21 to 23% of adults being unable to locate information in text, 41 to 44% of adults with the lowest literacy rates were living in poverty. 21% of adults read at or below a fifth grade reading level, with 45 million Americans being marginally illiterate. One in five high school graduates couldn't read their diploma. And the study also found that there are almost 750,000 words in the English language, but one third of all the writing is made up of only 25 words. Plain language pops up in pop culture. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? All right, explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old, okay? Because there's an element to this thing. I just cannot get through my thick head. Here are several examples of people receiving complicated information and requesting a more plain language version. This request often comes through as asking for the information like they were a child. The first clip you saw is from The Office with the character Michael Scott, played by Steve Carell. The second is from the 1993 movie Philadelphia with Denzel Washington as the lawyer Joe Miller. The quotes in the last note show this yearning for plain language and the strive for simplification has been prevalent in pop culture for a long time. Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Thomas Jefferson said, the most valuable of all talents is that of never using two words when one will do. And Beatrix Potter said, the shorter and the plainer, the better. This mockery of convoluted language and legalese and pop culture even appears in American case law. A bankruptcy judge in Texas denied a defendant's motion in 2006 because, quote, the court cannot determine the substance, if any, of the defendant's legal argument. Nor can the court even ascertain the relief the defendant is requesting. The judge then went on to quote this famous scene from the movie Billy Madison in his footnote. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. Two U.S. presidential administrations have attempted to address the need for plain language through executive action and legislation. In June 1998, President Clinton issued the Clinton Memorandum on Plain Language in Government Writing, which stated that the federal government's writing must be in plain language. By using plain language, we send a clear message about what the government is doing, what it requires, and what services it offers. It defined plain language documents as those with logical organization, easy to read design features, and ones that use common everyday words, except for necessary technical terms, that uses you and other pronouns, the active voice, and short sentences. In 2010, President Obama signed the Plain Writing Act of 2010 into law. This required federal agencies to use plain writing in every covered document of the agency that the agency issues or substantially revises. Its purpose was to improve the effectiveness and accountability of federal agencies to the public by promoting clear government communication that the public can understand and use. Here is a clip from ABC News discussing the Plain Writing Act of 2010. Something Republicans and Democrats can both agree on, the need for government documents to make some sort of sense. If you've ever tried to fill out an income tax return, you know how confusing federal documents can be. So Congress has now stepped in, and our John Berman, quite literally, has both sides of the story. 
the aquatic vertebrate propels forward, manipulating its complex musculature. In other words, the fish is swimming. Yes, there is something to be said for simplicity, even in Washington. So last week, President Obama signed the Plain Writing Act of 2010. The idea is that government documents should be written in clear, understandable language. It's been a problem since the time of the honeymooners. And who willfully fails to pay such estimated tax or tax, make such return, keep such records, or supply such information. Why, Ralph, it sounds like you are in trouble. <laughs> trouble? I don't even know what I'm talking about! <laughs> What will the new law mean for you? A Medicare letter that used to say, investigators at the contractor will review the facts in your case and decide the most appropriate course of action, so on and so forth. If the practice continues, the contractor may conduct special audits of the provider's medical records. Now it reads, we will find out if it was an error or fraud. 53 words to 11. A win for those against wordiness. John Berman, on behalf of my employer, the American Broadcasting Company, which is the division of the Walt Disney Company, signing off from the west side of 66th Street in the borough of Manhattan. In other words, John Berman, ABC News, New York. PlainLanguage.gov is a U.S. government website that has information about plain language, training, examples, and guidelines. It also has this handy checklist to get you started on your plain language journey. It's important to remember that shorter isn't always better when it comes to plain language. Sometimes you need the extra text to get the point across. For example, this is a definition of a legal guardian. On the left is a shorter definition of what a legal guardian is, but it is at a grade level 13.5, saying a legal guardian has the authority and duty of care for the personal and property interests of another person. However, the better definition under plain language and readability is the one that is a grade 7 reading level. It states that a legal guardian acts as a parent for another person. The guardian must care for and make decisions for that person. For example, a guardian must make sure the person is properly fed, clothed, housed, and that they go to school. The guardian has the power to make property, medical care, and schooling decisions for that person. Similar to the plainlanguage.gov checklist, here are decisive steps for creating an A to J guided interview in plain language. The three I want to emphasize are aiming for a fifth grade reading level. If you target your interview questions for a fifth grade reading level, most American adults will be able to understand and work through your interview. Forms are long and repetitive, so the second one to highlight is to boil it down for the end user. If you boil it down for them, you'll reduce the amount of time someone has to spend in a stressful situation filling out court forms. Finally, write for your audience. You, or your subject matter expert if that's not you, are the experts on the people who will be using your forms. So make sure to consider the user's age, education, culture, and language as you're drafting your interview content. These user personas will make sure you tailor your interview and develop strong self-represented litigant facing interviews. Now let's talk about the tools built into A to J Author that will help you with plain language. The Reports tab has a built-in readability checker. The interview is graded on the Flesh Kincaid and the Coleman Lau reading grade level evaluators. A to J Author evaluates both the individual text sections like question text, learn mores, and pop-ups but also the cumulative readability score for the entire interview. The scores are green if they are under a 6th grade reading level, yellow if they are a 6th to 9th grade level, and red for 10th grade and above. The examples I have here include red and yellow sections. That's not to say they're bad, though. Sometimes the length of the sentence to the number of words in the sentence throws off the algorithm for the evaluators but this overall grading scheme will give you a solid idea of where you need to revise and improve the plain language and readability of your interview. There are also plain language tools outside of A to J Author. The first one here, the plain language course, is not really outside of A to J Author land completely. It is a series of three Cali lessons written by writeclearly.org, Jeff Hogue, formerly of Lonnie, Transcend Translations, and John Mayer from Cali. It's written using Cali Author, which is A to J Author's sister software. The project walks you through 
three lessons on plain language tailored for the legal aid and automated document communities. You can find all three lessons on our website at adajauthor.org slash plain underscore language underscore course. There's also plainlanguage.gov that we've talked about with checklists, examples, and guidelines for federal agencies that are applicable across the law. And then finally, there's Transcend. They're a great company that's worked with many legal aid organizations and courts to improve their plain language. They have articles explaining why plain language is important, evaluations of court forms, discussions about the advantages of plain language, and also a plain language lesson on their YouTube channel. That is the end of our plain language lesson. You should now understand why plain language is important, especially when creating automated forms for self-represented litigants. You should have concrete steps for creating plain language A to J guided interviews. And you should know about the tools both within A to J Author and outside of it to evaluate your project's readability.